So let's talk about object methods now. So here I have a sample application. What I'm doing, I'm creating a new list here. Then I'm creating three users. They all have unique information here. For example, Tony Smith is 70 years old, Bob Holmes and Tyrone Jones. Then each of these objects here, I'm adding each one to our list. So now our list of users will contain all three of these objects. I'm using a for each loop to cycle through all of the users and in turn output all this information to the console window. So let's just take a look at that now. So you can see this is the result we get. So it's just outputting all of this object information on the screen. Now what I want to do, I want to find out which of these users have retired. So have they reached retirement age? Or, or are they a pensioner, <laughs> depending what country you live in? Now in the UK, I'm not sure about America, but um, the retirement age is, I think, 66 for males. Uh, we'll just use 66 as an as a arbitrary number. It could be anything. So Tony Smith would be retired in that case. But Bob Holmes and Tyrone Jones, you know, have a ways to go yet before they're retired. So what I want to do, I want to output an extra bit of information to say, is the user retired? So how we would normally do this is set up maybe an if statement and we'd say if the user's age, so dot age, is greater or equal to, let's just say 66 is the retirement age, then we'd say, okay, they're retired. So we'd say retired. So we'll initialize it to false. And if they're greater than that, I'll just say retired is true. But for example, something like that. So that's how we would normally set up a case where if they're retired, we'd use a condition and then we can kind of output that information to the screen. So it would look something like that. So you can see um, we have our nice loop here with our age, last name and age. But when it comes to retired, we kind of have all this information. It looks a little bloated. Maybe we can kind of move this somewhere else, maybe inside our class here. And then just have another one liner here. And this is what we can kind of achieve with object methods in this case. So what we want to do is kind of put this logic here, this condition inside our class so we don't need to kind of worry about it we don't know how it's calculated we don't really care we just kind of want a little variable here that says retired and we can kind of display that information so let's have a look how we can create an object method by moving this logic inside of our class so just before i do that i'm going to run the application real quick just so we can see the result here and you can see underneath each user uh, it says retired is true because this age is over 66 and the rest are false just because they're not 66 or over. So let's kind of move this logic into what's called a, an object method. And we define that inside our class right here. So here's our class here. We have our kind of variables here. We have two constructors. And what we want to do is just create a method in here. So... We're going to use the internal keyword. Again, don't worry about what that means right now. Um, we're just going to put it in here. And when we define a method, we need a return type. So it's going to be a Boolean because we want to say, are they retired true or are they retired false, for example. Now the name of the method, I'm going to call it is retired. And then it doesn't take any parameters because we have access to the age through the class itself up here. So user age. So we're just going to create our method here. And then what we want to do is return something like this. Now Visual Studio has always, already kind of hinted to us what we might want to do. But let's just take this here. So what we're saying here is if the user's age is more or equal to 66, retired equals true so we could also say that which is this exact same thing because this condition will evaluate to true or false and then the result is stored in a boolean so very simple really so what i want to do is take the condition here 
go to our class and we want to return this out of this method here. So just like that. But because we're inside our class here, we have access to user age here. So we're just going to take this and we're going to put that there. We've created a method. It has no parameters, but it has a return type of boolean. We're returning true or false if the user's age right here is more than or equal to 66. So coming back out of here, we can remove this completely now. And what we can do is take our object here, which is user, because we're going through this on a for loop. And then we can access a brand new method that we've just created right here called is retired. And you can see that returns a boolean. So I double click that, open and close parentheses because it takes no parameters. And now you can see the code looks a lot more streamlined. We don't have that kind of condition in here. We just have four kind of nice bits of code, one getting the name, one getting the age, and one getting if they're retired. I just realized I spelled retired wrong in the method there. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. But you can see it looks a lot more simple now. But one of the benefits and advantages of OO anyway is that your logic is kind of hidden away in here. Um, say, for example, if one member of your team, if you're working on a big team, works on this class here, and you work on this class here, you don't need to worry about how is retired is calculated. You don't know. Maybe you don't even care. You don't even know what the retirement age is. That's okay because the only thing we need to call is this method right here. Then maybe our friend uh, on our software team can, you know, deal with the intricacies of working out maybe what the retirement age is. So the, the principle is it's kind of hiding the information from you. It's abstracting it away. And that is one of the key points of object oriented programming abstraction. You don't need to know how this works. For example, if you own a coffee maker, you don't need to know how it's going, you know, how it works inside internally, all the electronics. The only thing you need to do is fill it up with water and press the button. So that's what I'm kind of trying to explain here. We don't need to know how this works. We just need to call the method and it gets us a true or false value. So that's one of the advantages of using object-oriented programming. And this is how object methods work in C-sharp.